Hey guys, um, I was just watching a sermon from another preacher and something leaped into my spirit. Um, this person was talking about how our expectations sometimes can let us down if our expectations are too high or if we expect, if we expect too little of God, we can just limit our potential for him to do things in our lives. And as I was, as I was sitting there watching this sermon, something leaped into my spirit and I just wanted to share it with you. Um, I have to say um, that the Lord uh, said, uh, adjusting to the difference. And he was talking about adjusting to the difference of your expectations and his purpose. Sometimes um, it's not that we that we are not allowed to have expectations of God or um, we can't expect things of God um, but it's like when things don't happen the way we want them to or how fast we want them to we have problems adjusting to the difference uh, between God's speed and our and our need and what we think of as our need but what we have to realize is because God is infinite and because he knows all and sees all our we, we, we are very myopic as human beings and I don't and I don't say that as an in, as an insult. I say that as a revelation. We can we can only see um, we see we see through a glass darkly until um, he reveals more and more. And sometimes when we are seeing through that glass darkly and we are disappointed. We, we have no idea that God has got something better. Um, the old saying is so true. When God closes a door, some way he opens the window. A window. And sometimes, the, most times, the window is even better than the door that we thought he should open. So we spend our time kicking down doors and trying to get into places where we think we should be. Whereas he doesn't want us in those places because he has something better for us. And sometimes the better doesn't look better. We're like, God, really? Like you you brought me here and you you brought me out of this to that. Basically, it makes me think of Moses how he, he his mother um put him in basically a basket and put him in the river and he was raised by Pharaoh and then Pharaoh's daughter and then when he got old enough he realized that he was actually for all intents and purposes adopted and then when he realized he was adopted he realized um that he was an Israelite and the children of Israel were enslaved for hundreds of years. And um, he, 
he was called to lead them. So when he led them out of bondage, they started to complain and complain and complain. They made it so bad for Moses that he just said, Lord, where have you taken me? These people are just totally complaining. And it was funny. When, when you read the story in Exodus, you feel so sorry for Moses because all these people do is complain. After he went to, to Pharaoh, after the Red, Red Sea debacle, after everything, after um, the burning bush, and after all the, this, these people were complaining, and Moses said, you know what, I've got, I had enough, and he kind of got mad, and instead of doing what God told him to do, he did the complete opposite, he got, he got so upset that he str struck the rock, and he wasn't supposed to. And God said, because of this, you're not gonna go see gonna go see the promise. Moses like he's like basically, Moses, you did all this good. You you brought them out of bondage, you brought them through the Red Sea, you did all this wonderful thing, you caused fair you, you were the mouthpiece. Um, that I used to cause Pharaoh to let them go, but because of your disobedience in this instance, you're not going to see the promised land. Um, and the Lord is saying to uh, through me now that hold on because what you th what you think was going to happen or was not going to happen is going to happen but it won't be the way that you wanted it to and he's saying do not get frustrated do not throw in the towel your promise is just around the corner and if you stick it out and if you say lord make my expectation your expectation cause me to trust you cause me to believe that what you say is true and if that door closes that the that the that the window you open will be wider will be faster than i could ever have dreamed and so and most times when he closes that door um, there is a reason that we cannot see that that door is closed. So we complain, we get upset, and we miss our promise, and we get discouraged. Um, and we have to start all over again. Whereas if we had just stuck it out, we would have seen something greater around the corner. And although discouragement is part of life, he said, I will be with you um, in, in that. And um, our, our discouragement is his opportunity to do something great. He's, he's, saying to us, although you're discouraged, although you're weary, can you trust me in that weariness? Although you feel let down, although you feel that it's not working out, I should give up with this, can you hold on? Can you just keep your hands on the plow? Because in his due season, he will promote you. And all the toil, all the prayer, all the fasting will be worth it. And another thing too is you have no idea the people 
that are being encouraged by you, that are seeing you, and that are seeing your dedication to your company at work, and that are seeing your behavior in traffic, that are seeing you worship God at church, that are seeing you smile when things are get going wrong and you're encouraging them and in due season they will come up to you and say you you know when you were going through that time you encouraged me by by just your demeanor and i think that we we tend to not know that people are being affected by what we by what we by how we act and what we do um the other day i told i told this story in my last video about this person who said to me rachel you don't know who's listening to the these videos just keep going and going and going because sometimes when you don't see much quote-unquote success you tend to give up but the lord said will you stick it out with the four before i give you the 40 before i give you the 400 before i give you the 4000 will you will you make videos when it's just four people watching or will you just say oh it's not it, that's no thing it's just family and friends friends but he's teaching me that no matter who's watching one day he he will promote me to where I'm so supposed to be if I'm faith, faithful over a few things he will make me ruler over much um, this is going to take a while, but I feel that I'm, I need to read the scripture that I got from uh, Growth, uh, um, Bible Gateway this morning. It was yesterday morning. It was such an encouragement to me. Um, so I'm going to uh, read it. And it'll take me some time, but it's worth it because I don't have it queued up but it's um and my face is about to disappear uh, sorry about that but I think it's so worth going to the word on this one um I'll talk I'll talk while I'm getting it up so uh it won't be just dead air I hope you guys are having a wonderful day um, I hope um, that these sermons are blessing you and I pray that God is doing some wonderful things in your life and it is so amazing when you submit yourself to God and submit yourself to his will what he does and um when when you do that you understand that when you give god control of your life things don't always go smoothly but he can guide you through that and i was thinking the other day no i was thinking today actually um that people always say make time for god make time for god i was thinking the other day that time with god should be not something you put on your schedule it should be just um a conversation like a open ended never ending conversation i think the problem is um, with many people is they try to schedule God in instead of incorporating him into their lives so they have um, 
a devotional time and a time for prayer. And yes, I believe a time for prayer and the word is necessary, but I believe it is more necessary to incorporate God in your everyday decisions, in your everyday life. So it could be at work, um, just breathing a prayer um, for, Lord, how do I approach this person? Lord, how do I approach this meeting? Lord, give me the words to speak. The Lord so wants people to just incorporate him into their lives, not as a religious thing, but just as a member of their lives. Like he wants to he wants people to be so in tune with his spirit that in every decision he every decision you make He's a part of it. And I know some people say God doesn't care about some things, but I'm a living witness in that God cares about everything. And when you get to that place with God that he's not someone you carve out time for, but instead you incorporate him in your life, you understand that hearing the Spirit's voice, it, it becomes easier. And it's not always just, it's almost never this, oh, oh, daughter, I love you, and stuff like that. Um, it's, he develops, the more you incorporate God into your lives in the da daily decisions, I found that he develops his way of speaking to you, um, his way of communicating with you, and you can slowly um, differentiate the difference between God's voice and the devil's voice. I think sometimes we try and um, really um, make it so hard. Oh, how do I hear the voice of God? How do I hear the voice of God? Well, I think like any relationship, um, hearing the voice of God takes work. Hearing the voice of God takes time. It takes um, precision. It takes just a, rel a relational development that most of us don't have. We're just so stuck on, oh, we need to have a devotional or we need to carve out time with God. Whereas he wants to be incorporated in every aspect of your life. Even the movies you watch, the songs you listen to, you'd be surprised on how he wants to speak on every aspect of your life and the only way to develop that relationship to develop with what I call the rhythm of God is to spend time with him and not to like um, you have to uh, carve out this certain space but more than anything he wants to be incorporated in every decision of your life and um, he wants he wants you to know him um, and in the Bible at least the King James Version um, it says when somebody is intimate with somebody they talk about um, knowing the other person for example, um, you say Adam knew his wife, which means knowing requires intimacy. And intimacy is into me you see. I'm sure you've heard that before. But a lot of people, um, they want God to see into their hearts. But 
but they don't know how to tap into uh, the heart of God. And the only way to tap into the heart of God is to develop that relationship. And you can even start that by writing, um, by having a journal and, and looking around your day for the times God is speaking to you and looking in his word for the times God is speaking to you. And the way he often, um, the way you can check if it's God was, is if, if he says what you, what you're feeling in, in his word or what you're sensing in your spirit in his word, it is most likely God and may and sometimes even if you're not sure just step out on faith it may be God or it may not be God but uh, um but even if it's not God even if it's you he's going to use um whatever it is to his advantage um T.D. Jakes was in was in an interview um, with someone and um, he said his son uh, was doing a degree um, in music and his son asked him, Dad, how do I know um, that this is what I want, I'm called to do or whatever? And he said to his son, Son, if it's not what you're called to do, it will be the thing that will lead to the thing. So even if you think it might be God or you're not sure, I would say, just, first of all, check in his word um, to see if there's a reference. Um, and then, and then, um, to what you have, what you think you're hearing, and just step out on faith. And even if it isn't God, it will be the thing that will lead to the thing. Because quite often we, we are just so like, what's my purpose? What do I need to do? And usually your purpose for right now is where you are right now. So, I can, he wants to, you, you to work where you are right now. And sometimes we wait for this big purpose and our purpose is basically uh, right where we are right now. And th those little things will lead to the bigger things. Um, where is it? Sorry, I'm just looking for the Bible verse. Um, so that's what, what I've been le learning about, about God. And it's, it's been, it's been awesome, really. Um, Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are great. get it up soon but it was it's so poignant to what I was uh, thinking about uh, what I was talking about about God being with you um,
just one, just one second. Okay, uh, this is the scripture I was talking about. This is Joshua 1, 9, and it's from the New International Version. It said, Have I, okay, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I'm going to read that again. Have I not commanded, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Father, I pray that this word will permeate our hearts, O oh God. Lift discouragement, God. Lift the burden, Lord God. Lift every heavy yoke, Lord God. I, I pray, Lord God, that you will just show yourself strong in the lives of your people today. Lord God, I pray that you will. Um, be with your people in a supernatural way this day, Lord God. I pray that you just show up and, and show off in their lives, oh God. Let them know that it's only you that can do this specific thing. And let them not wait for the big purpose, but let them take little steps where they are toward the big purpose, oh God. And even if the big purpose doesn't happen for years, I pray, Lord God, that you will keep them strong. Lift every head. Lift every discouraged heart, Lord Jesus. Lift every broken spirit. Lift every broken life today, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, come into their lives and do what only you can do. Raise them up to be the men and women of God that you've called us to be. Oh God, I pray that as a vessel of honor, fit and meet for the master's use, you will teach us how to love you. Teach us each the individual rhythm, Lord God, how to hear your voice. In the name of Jesus, amen. Holy Spirit, break through our walls. Holy Spirit, break through our bondage. Break through our mindset, oh God. Replace it with, with the mindset that you would have us have in the name of Jesus. Dispel any myths of you, Lord God. Dispel the myth that you're not for us, that you are against us. Dispel the myth that you have left us because you said in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. I praise you and worship you, Lord God. I lift you up as the only wise God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So guys, I will see you later. And I hope that you were blessed and I will be praying for you. Um, thanks. Bye. Have a wonderful evening. Or day, wherever you are. Love you.